what stuck out to you? What was your dominant takeaway from what happened last night? Let's start there. Uh, yeah, so I think that uh, last week when we talked, I think we talked about were you ready to write off Kyle Shanahan? Is he not a leader? We talked about all those things. I said I still believe in the guy. I love the guy. Give him one more week. And he proved me yeah. right slash wrong because I did kind of doubt him in the first place. So I was wrong <laughs> to do that. But yeah, he he did his job. He came in. The Niners were well coached. They were organized. They played hard. They played tough. And they look like the team that I think most people expected them to be at the beginning of the year. And I thought that was awesome. Yeah. I, and the, the th we were texting during the game. And the thing that makes me laugh when Kyle Shanahan does this because he can do this almost at will. I mean, he we saw him do it a lot last year. He did it in this game. And it's like, why don't you do this all the time? Like, do, does it is it boring to you to call that many runs and screens? Uh, because it seems like if he could just stick to this game plan, he would hardly ever lose. And he certainly wouldn't lose to weak teams like Philly. I don't know. It's just like, it seems like he's just always – has been the only person who can stop himself. It's like he's Batman and the Joker at the same time. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's sustainable to go with this game plan. At some point, you need a quarterback. I'm you sorry. need a quarterback who can throw, who's yeah. going to throw. Let me just turn on a light in here. Sure. Just bear with us, guys. Yeah, I mean, you saw it. Like, it only got him through the yeah. first half. It didn't even get him through right. the whole game. Yeah. Right. You need your quarterback to throw. So this is not a sustainable game plan. But no. for yesterday, it was what the team needed, given the pass rush they were going against. And also, I think the Rams game plan helped a lot. I don't know. From my TVI, it looked like they were just contented rushing four and playing a lot of coverage in the back. And it wasn't aggressive coverage like the Dolphins, who were in your face playing press man. It was more soft, playing softer zones and trying to just let their pass rush win the game. And Kyle just ate that game plan up with a lot of quick passes, protecting both his line and his quarterback. OK, let me ask you this, because we both agree that that was like Shanahan at his best last night. So um, why didn't he do that the week before against the Dolphins? What yeah, was that? I do. So I do think that there was a little bit of they fell down so early. Okay. I mean, you look at what happened panic. to McVay. Yeah. You look what happened to McVay yesterday, yeah. and you you would think that, oh, maybe McVay is not that good of a coach. No, McVay is an excellent coach. It's just that when you fall down that early, like they had a great game plan on how to run the football against the 49ers. It was just that they were down, so they couldn't get as many runs as they wanted to win. And they have kind of the same thing with their quarterback where – you can't really ask him to throw when you're down in a just a straight drop back situation when you're down 21 to 9. It's just not feasible with Jared Goff, especially when if there's anybody around him, he's throwing a duck. Ugh, yeah. I got to say, I've seen Jared Goff play in person a lot of times. He stinks. I'm sorry. I mean, he throws a nice football, but so do a lot of high school quarterbacks. I mean, in the functional sense of playing football in the NFL, he can't move, he's not a drop back passer. He's so overpaid, and I'm never going to really take the Rams seriously until they move on. You can't win with a guy make it like that making $30 million a year. Um, uh, I, I'm, not ready, I'm not ready to write off Goff yet. I thought the throw to Woods for the touchdown was He can make throws. Throw. He can right. make and throws. I, and I think yeah. if McVay can cook up a game plan and their defense can keep them attached, you can certainly be a playoff team with Jared Goff as your quarterback which I guess in today's NFL is good enough. So we were, we're really impressed with Kyle. Before we move on from Kyle, we're impressed with him. Do we expect him to be locked in in the zone like this the rest of the season? Because he really kind of was in the zone all of last season until arguably the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. I mean, is, is this a one-off or is this the Niners finally finding themselves and going on a run? Look, I think it's a little bit of a one-off. Uh, I mm -hmm. think when you look at the schedule, Mm. This the schedule doesn't uh, lend itself to playing this type of football. Your quarterback is going to have to make throws. That's how yeah. the Niners are going to win in New England. That's how they're going to compete in Seattle. The defense played great yesterday, but this defense isn't going to is going to be more of a bend and do not break defense. There's going to be offenses that are going to really make them struggle, and it's not the fault of coaching or players. It's just that they have a lot of injuries. 
And yeah. injuries means you're playing a lot of backup players. And obviously your backup players are not as good as your starter play starters. Yeah. The thing yeah. with uh the thing with that though is that I mean it, when you go to, and just to look ahead next week against New England, New England's offense is predicated on ball control. And let's say that they have all negative tests this week and they're actually able to practice something they haven't been able to do properly for a little while now. They're going to, there were some weaknesses in the run game, in the run defense yesterday that seemingly Sean McVay found and seemed to capitalize on because Daryl Henderson was cooking Yep. for a lot of that game. The score was the, what really held them back. So I think that next week, if you don't jump out 21 7 or 21 or 14 7 and New England's keeping the ball, you can't call this same exact game plan. There's going to be a little bit more onus on the quarterback and the offensive line to do their job. And I think that that's when we can make a better evaluation on how good both are. I don't think this one off game or maybe even the Miami game are the examples that we should take. They're both a little bit on a little bit extremes on different ends of the spectrum. Well, New England does have the Niners kryptonite, which is a mobile quarterback. You know, I right. mean, he can Cam Newton can scramble around and do a lot of the things that Carson Wentz did. So, yeah, that'll be an interesting matchup. Uh, right. And we, the game plan defensively against Kyle is going to be real similar to the one that Miami had. It's going to be a lot of just press man coverage, pattern yeah. match on the first read for Jimmy, mm -hmm. and try to get home. And they'll call cover zero, which the Niners did beat yesterday for a touchdown and they'll play cover one and it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be very aggressive in your right. face and it's going to be difficult to beat especially if their defense is not getting off the field here's why it's so effective doing that against jimmy i mean jimmy it thrives off of quick passes guys who are open immediately you know the, the slants against zone coverage that quick outs to the running back if you play press man coverage those your hair looks great by the way thank you if you play press man coverage guys aren't going to be open right away he's going to have to hold the ball hitch pat the ball and that's not what he wants to do so yeah it's the best strategy against him make him wait make him hold it make him get to a second read if he can't <laughs>